you know, it's funny we talk about the new regulations that are coming out and we talk about, you know, will these new regulations change the way business is done in the Gulf of Mexico? Um, unfortunately, to implement those regulations, I think there's going to be a moratorium. I think there's going to be things that shut down for a while. Um, a lot of the changes that are being requested, especially with the BOP equipment, some of them are major changes. I mean, you're talking about accumulation volume, talking about changes to the emergency sequences, you're talking about changes to um, additional ROV functions. That's just time. And unfortunately, it's not the time as much with the rig, which is, is the time. It's will the vendors be able to deliver if Bessie says you have three months to implement this? And for me, that answer is probably no. Um, and that's why I've said there will be a moratorium in the Gulf of Mexico because if let's just say hypothetically in June of 2016 the new regulations come out um, and everybody says oh my gosh we gotta go do this and now the phone calls are going into the vendors to say hey we need you know 100 new accumulators across our fleet and the vendors say hey company X we need you know 300 accumulator bottles and they say oh delivery is six months well guess what that's six months plus to get this implementation done um, unfortunately for me, new regulations don't improve reliability. And what I mean by that is, at the end of the day, reliability comes down to one subject. It comes down to people. And it's the people doing the work that actually improve reliability. You can have a war and peace novel of regulations, but if the guys executing the job aren't doing it to a high standard, we're still going to have issues, we're still going to have downtime. Um, if I think about each of the regulations that are in place for BUP control systems, additional accumulation volume, you know, emergency sequences, ROV, you know, all of that stuff is there for a Macondo if it takes place. How do we prevent the Macondo from taking place from a BUP reliability standpoint? That comes down to training, it comes down to competency, it comes down to QA, QC. Um, you know, I've heard Director Salerno be quoted talking about, you know, he would like to see high reliability organizations like the U.S. Navy Submarine Subsafe QA program. As a former QA inspector in that program, I can tell you it's an entirely, diff an entirely different level of reliability, organization, documentation, checks and balances, all that stuff that goes into Subsafe QA is a level that the oil and gas industry is not ready to see. Um, do I think there would be value in it? Yes. Do I think it would help reliability? Yes. Do I think that an average rig move would go from seven days to 30 days? Yes. But that's just something that the industry would have to address and have to be ready to embrace. Um, but yeah, I don't think an increase in regulation equals an increase in reliability. Um, I think it, at the end of the day, you can minimize and, and reduce and eliminate downtime by having the right people doing the right work with the right parts, with a level of dedication and a level of, of ownership that is unlike anything else in the industry today. If we have sister ships, two ships, same equipment, same OEM, same maintenance procedures, same parts, why is one ship excelling and one ship is failing? If I took the two crews off and I switched crews, I can guarantee you that the crew that was that the rig that was doing bad will start to increase in its in its operational proficiency because it's the people who do the execution, it's not the equipment. So yeah, I mean the, the regulations are coming. Um, it's just something that's it's a fact of life. As an industry, we just have to embrace it. The challenge will be one, will the vendors be able to provide the equipment in a timely fashion to have them when they need it? Will the vendors be able to support the upgrades having, you know, you got to remember too, we're in a, a major downturn. It's not just the drilling contractors who have let people go. It's the, the OEMs who have let their service technicians go. Now we're going to have new regulations, which all of a sudden are going to require a huge demand on the OEMs to be able to put guys in the field. Where are those guys at? And, and not only that, where is the level of, of competency with the OEMs? for those brand new guys are going to be going out into the field. So, you know, we're kind of in this, you know, perfect storm of new regulations, not enough people, 
all this work that has to be done. It's going to want to be done very quickly so people can go back to work. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. And unfortunately, it's going to happen regardless of, of what anybody says or what anybody does. The industry has put its comments and feedback into to Bessie. Bessie has said, that, hey, look, we've received your comments. We've looked at them. We're going to move forward. Um, as someone that testified during the Macondo hearings, you know, for, for MMS and the Coast Guard on BUP regulations and BUP maintenance and, and just everything in general, I, I understand where we're going. I understand that the regulations were built based off from things that happened during Macondo. I understand that because I was there. The challenge is, is do those changes really make a difference in the long run? Um, I think in some areas it will if we ever had another event, but unfortunately to eliminate that from happening, it comes down to people, it comes down to the equipment, and it comes down to the documentation and just the quality assurance that goes into the work. So, you know, for, for me, that's a good question. We'll just see, have to see what happens.